The only really like not fun thing about summertime is that I have to wear sunglasses. And that like seems like the most ridiculous first world problem ever. But like you don't have to wear sunglasses. You could just not. But for eyes in the Pacific Northwest, seriously, when the sun comes out, we're like vampires. We don't know what to do with ourselves because we never see the freaking sun. And so we could be just like slightly overcast with some sun shining through. And we're like, <sighs> it's crazy. But because we have to wear sunglasses and I can never like find a pair that properly fits, I just always have this red marks on both sides of my nose, just permanent indents and sucks. It's not fun at all. And so that's the only thing that sucks about summer. Like literally, that's it. So if that's the only thing, you know, I guess summer's pretty sweet. Of course, this has nothing whatsoever to do with the poor, but I will tell you all about today's poor, which is not a poor-ish, and it's a recipe day in just a minute. But before I do, hello, I am Mrs. Soap and Clay. Let's make stuff. How's it going, Sudzers? Welcome back to the channel. You are at Soap and Clay, where we make all the soapy things, and you are here for day 67 of 365 days of soap, and today is, yeah, a recipe day. We are making bubble wands. People have been requesting this for a long time, and we've done a lot of bubble bar recipes, but as people have mentioned in comments when they've done my recipe or other people's recipes, it's not exactly the right consistency to do like a reusable bubble wand. Like, you know, if you're trying to completely do plush. That, for sure. And so I'm gonna give you a new recipe for bubble bars today for solid bubble bath that is definitely firmer and will allow you to do the swirly swirl in the tub or run it under whatever and then dry out nicely so you can use it again for the next bath, you know today and we're going to talk about the new ingredients that we're using in today's recipe why we are using them what the benefit is and why this is actually a pretty kick-ass recipe for you just to put in your soapy lineup across the board so you know let's get to it so we can do the awesome bubble wand extravaganza we are making solid bubble bars today guys and i'm giving you a recipe all written down because that's how we roll Nine ounce baking soda, seven ounces SLSA, one ounce cream of tartar, one ounce tartaric acid, two ounces cornstarch, one ounce kale and clay, 1.4 ounces cocoa butter, 4.2 ounces glycerin, 0.5 ounces of scent, micas if desired, and if you are using micas, you're gonna wanna put polysorbate 80 in it. Now, you melt down your cocoa butter, you add your glycerin to it, you add your scent to it, you add your poly and your color to it, and you mix a cool slurry and put it in with your dry ingredients. And then you're going to mixy, mixy, mixy until all of that clumps up into a nice consistency. Now, these are, this is a different recipe than what I've shown you before for bubble bars because somebody wanted me to do bubble wands and I had no idea what in the hell they were talking about. And then they, clarified and told me that that is a lush product and I'm like cool so the scent that I used for this was a rose jam which is a dupe for lush because you know if we're gonna do a lush thing why not and I went and actually looked on the website after I had already started the mixy mix thing for this because I sort of understood the concept right okay you want a bubble wand and I'm thinking well it can be a wand wand like a Harry Potter wand 
right? Like a magic wand, which I prefer and think is cooler. And that's sort of what I thought it was. But then I looked on the website and they're talking about like the bubble wands that you blow bubbles out of. That's what the Lush bubble wands look like. And so I didn't have little mini bunt pan molds in the shop, but I did have donuts. And so you can do it with a mini bunt pan. You can use this recipe with a mini bunt pan and you can actually get the ridges that would come from, you know, a bubble wand that comes in the little bubbles that the kids like to blow bubbles. Don't take a shot every time I say bubbles today. Okay, you'll die. You will, you'll die so hard. But yeah, this is a, this particular consistency of this bubble bar batter is going to be really nice for, well, firmness as well as being able to, you know, withstand multiple uses because this is the, a reusable, right? So the idea is you can sort of splash it around in the tub and then dry it off and use it for the next bath and all the jazz, right? So yeah, again, I am using just regular donut molds for this, but you can use just mini bunts, mini bunt pans, and get all of the different craggy bits or whatever to make it look like a bubble wand. For sure, same process, doesn't really matter. I do like to put baking soda down in the actual mold before I smoosh all of the bubble bar batter into it just to make it easy to get it out. Because the thing is about this, well, it's a twofold problem. Whenever you're working with like a metal tin and bubble bars, it or bath bombs to that, if you don't get them out of the mold quickly, like if you let them dry in the mold, it is a son of a bitch to get them out the next day. Like it is not fun. And so what I like to do is, you know, do like five or so at a time and then turn the metal mold over pound them out, and then do it again, right? The secondary problem with leaving them in a mold, so if you had a silicone mold in the right shape, you're think, maybe you're thinking, hey, this could work. Secondary problem to that is you need to be able to insert the sticks <laughs> um, before they completely firm up. Otherwise, the bubble bar batter mixture is not going to adhere to the stick well, and so it's going to fall right off. And so you don't want that for sure. So I will be working with small things with small numbers of them and then just pounding them out. And my brain, my brain is just not good. It's so dirty today. Sorry, so sorry. I'm focusing. Yes. And then after about 30 minutes of them sitting up, I will insert the sticks so they can finish their curing process, you know, overnight with the sticks inside. So, you know, they, they do their thing. We have to move on from this one. We just, we just have to. Now you saw in that recipe, the tartaric acid, I, in the next week or so, I'm doing what basically amounts to an entire video on tartaric acid. Um, and it all stems from a recipe that I saw on the interwebs on a website that is terrible. Like I just took one look at it and I'm like, this is a terrible recipe. It's not going to work. Let me tell you why. And so I, I made the recipe and, um, that video is coming and we will talk more in depth about tartaric acid and what it is, but the easiest place to find it right now just for the information to give you right now for this particular recipe is on Amazon. And it's actually, it's a pretty cheap ingredient and it is different from cream of tartar. Now this particular recipe has both cream of tartar and tartaric acid in it, but tartaric acid is going to be very similar to citric acid. Okay. Which makes sense. And it is used in wine and beer making a lot. And also, yes, I bent my my thing. I don't know my own strength sometimes. Yes. So with this particular recipe, the inclusion of the tartaric acid is going to allow the bubble bars when they hit water to sort of fizz and break down more evenly 
since you want this to be a reusable product, right? And so you're not crumbling the entire thing in there. You're just gonna give them some sushi swooshes in the in the tub. And you want you still want that epic bubble. And so in order to get that, to achieve that, I put the tartaric acid in this one to essentially do oh a smaller version of what you would get, a smaller chemical reaction of what you would get if you were doing a bath bomb with that baking soda and that citric acid, right? This is baking soda and tartaric acid with a whole lot of bubblers in there. So it will just, it won't require not nearly as much, you know, crumbling and breaking down of the, of the product to, you know, achieve your end bubblicious bath, really. And once all of these get banged out onto the counter, again, I do let them sit for about 30 minutes before I insert the sticks. Now, these particular sticks that I'm using, I got them from Amazon and they are actually fan handles that I cut in half. And I really would recommend doing something that's, you know, wider like this, as opposed to like a, a paper straw, for example, because each of these bubble bars are weighing in at about six and a half ounces. And so they're a little bit too heavy for a paper straw. So I really do recommend doing something of a thicker popsicle stick variety so it can actually support the weight of the of the bubble bar. And I do just insert them in the middle and put them all the way to, put the sticks all the way to the middle opening there, the donut hole opening, and then just kind of press the bath bomb mixture around it to make sure it seals really well. And then I'll just leave them alone. now. To this, as you see, I'm reshaping everything as I'm going. You don't even really need, if you're not interested in doing the bunt pan things, you don't even really need the donut hole molds. You can just roll your own circles, you know? Lots of people are really good at rolling circles and that's awesome. So you can do that. And these will set up overnight. I will leave them alone, not touch them resist the urge overnight and then we will put a little bit of mica on them and then do a test of the bubbles but that's what they look like you know freshly made and let's go check them out next day and again you know bubble test okay and on to the finished product and the test and all of that jazz this is what they look like after being firmed up overnight and they hold up really well on the stick, which is nice. They don't slide off, which is very, very good. And I'm going to, just because I was a little bit heavy handed with the baking soda in the bottom of the mold, I'm going to put some sparkly mica on. Now that it's not really showing through beautifully with this lighting, but up close, just putting this sparkly mica on it, it really kind of ups the awesome with, you know, the pretty factor for all of this. You can obviously make them whatever color you want. You can make them multicolored. You can separate your batch and do two color. I mean, go to town, go off, have fun. I'm just making them pink because Scout likes pink and her birthday's coming up. And so as we get closer to birthdays, they get to do whatever they want, really. And she wanted pink for these. So we're doing the thing. Now for the test of this guy, just in a thing of water, the idea is again, we just smoosh it around a little bit in the water and that's awesome. And you're not gonna use a ton of it. Like that's not a lot was used. Obviously this is a very small bath. This would be like a bath for Barbies. But just to show you the agitation, because that's usually what you have to do with all bubble bars to get the good bubble going, I'm just going to use a whisk. And, you know, makes really good bubbles, for sure. It's a very, very nice product, very bubble-rific. Now, I think the point of the bubble wands at Lush is to be able to blow a bubble through the hole. And so I'm trying to do it on camera, and it's super not working. Like... <sighs> every time I blew a bubble, but you see there? Yeah, there's the film. There's the surface tension. You can totally do it. I just couldn't get it shown on camera, like of the bubble actually 
going because I'm an idiot and soap and clay kidlet she was not around to actually test it and see you know and like show us like blowing a bubble through it so I apologize for that but you can totally blow a bubble through that hole like you would with a bubble wand so that's fun too it's a nice fun you know shower bath time shower bath time treat for you know old and young alike that is day 67 it is a bubble wand recipe it is awesome Go make it have fun. And there you have it. Some awesome bubble wands that are, yeah, they're very, they're firm. And so they're going to hold up on their sticks for sure. But you can still do the swirly swirl thing to get the bubbles and whatever. And then you can reuse them until they're gone for sure. Now, obviously I showed this to you in like lollipop form and it's the same concept. If you literally wanted to make them sort of wand-esque, I don't know if that's what Lush actually does with them. It's just when I asked somebody what they meant by bubble wands, they referred to Lush and so okay I get the concept they might actually make it like looking like a wand itself you can totally do that by just wrapping around a, a stick you can do that too same concept with this recipe it will work out great either way but for this one with the lollipop I did want to show you just how good this recipe is that it will hold up on the stick and it won't fall off so there's that yes I hope you guys had a lot of fun today with today's recipe. I sure did. It's um, always cool to, you know, do some new tests and like show you guys what my thought process is on how to make something a little bit better than, you know, maybe you made it before. And so try the recipe. Let me know how you like it, you know, in the comments below. That would be excellent. If you are interested in more recipes, more sciencey fun, more chemistry fun, more fun fun, subscribe. That would be amazing. For those of you who are subscribed, hey, thank you. Did you have fun today with the video? Let me know, also in the comments, because I want to talk to you. I feel like it's been a while since we've chatted, like 24 hours. But yeah, I'm out of here for today. We will be back tomorrow for another round of Soapy Fun. Bye.